So here in verse 4 of James chapter 4, we're continuing our theme of answering the question that James has posed about wars and fighting. Where do wars and fighting uh, among you, where does that come from? And as we've seen, this is such a valid question for us to ask. And when it comes to verse number 4, we're going to find the second reason for this. He's already said that we should look within and see that there is a war and conflict going on within us. And now when we come to verse 4, he says, um, adulterers and adulteresses. And actually, most translations would omit the word uh, adulterers and go with adulteresses. It doesn't change the sense of what he's saying. He's really speaking about the issue of fidelity. and commitment, affection. And so he's speaking about the betrayal of that in our relationship with God, in that our affections have been transferred to something or someone else, and it's spoken of in terms of adultery. So the question he asks as he accuses his readers of infidelity in their relationship with the Lord is, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? So here's the question, do you not know? And then there's a statement here. Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. So he's speaking about the issue of friendship and enmity. He then says the word friend down here and the word enemy as well. That's the old classic love and hate. Now, before we get into some of the detail of this, let's just box out the question like so. So we're going to deal with that in a minute or two and come, first of all, to the statement that's here in verse number four. Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. So here is a statement and that statement is based on the question that he's put at the beginning of verse 4. Do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. And the point to make just here is that he's stating that this is something to do with the individual. Whoever therefore, based on the question, wants. And whoever wants to be a friend of the world makes himself. So the point is just that this issue of fidelity, this issue of a betrayal of our God and our intimate relationship with God is an individual issue. And it's not only an individual issue, but it is also a challenge. And he puts it as a challenge. So it's something that we need to think about as individuals, not corporately, but individually. Whoever, therefore, wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. It could just read, if I want to be a friend of the world, then I make myself an enemy of God. I do it to myself and I do it for myself. Now, down here in verse number five, just in terms of structure, he then um, gives us a scriptural justification for this statement and question in verse number four and says so he says do you think and he refers to the scripture and then he refers to this issue of jealousy and that verse is speaking about the truth that our god is a jealous god and again it comes back to this issue of fidelity and the intimate relationship we have with him and then in verse number six in terms of structure he's going to explain how it is that we can uh, deal with our infidelity. What do you do? How do you deal with affections that are drawn towards the world and drawn away from the Lord? And in verse number six, he's going to give the answer to that. So let's then look at verse four. We'll go back up and deal with the question and the statement here. Let's deal with the three words that are uh, in the question that require a wee bit of explanation. So first of all, the word friendship. And that word friendship really has the idea of brotherly love. It's a familiar Bible word, filial. 
and is the word from which we get brotherly love, kindness, affection. Let's put these words up here. Let me box that in there. So when he speaks about friendship, it's not a passing friendship. He's really speaking about affections. He's speaking about the love that we should have for God, but that could be transferred to, and he uses the word world here. So let's have a think about that. And this word world is speaking about the world system all around us. It's really our environment as we live in this world. It's the ethos of the age. It's the way that the world views everything. The world view, the ethos, the world system, and that world system in which we live and is our environment could easily become the object of our affection. And the truth of the matter is just this, that that world is anti-God. And friendship with that world is therefore to befriend and fall in love with what is anti-God and therefore place yourself in the position of being against God, being an enemy, being enmity with God. Now, there should be no surprise in this because um, before conversion, we were enemies. We were enemies in our minds by wicked work, works, Paul will teach. We were hostile to God. And when we got saved, then that all changed. And James is speaking about the possibility of reverting back to that default position of enmity and hostility toward God. So he asked the question, do you not know that brotherly love, affection, friendship with this world system, which is the environment in which we operate and live, is in fact placing ourselves in a position of hostility and enmity toward God because that world system is against God. That world system is actually an enemy of God. So therefore, he comes down to the statement and says, whoever, anyone, you, me, if we want, if we desire, if we're seeking friendship uh, with the world, to be a friend of the world, then we make ourselves. It's a deliberate decision. It's something that we do to ourselves and for ourselves. We make ourselves an enemy of God. And no Christian surely would want to be an enemy of God. So when we come back, when we come back and see the whole of the verse 4, 5, 6 together, you see the flow of thought. He accuses us of spiritual adultery, spiritual infidelity, a transfer of affections from where they ought to be to where they ought not to be. And where they ought to be is with God and where they ought not to be is with the world. And he says, do you not know what you're doing? That by falling in love, by transferring your affections to the world, you are actually putting yourself in the position of being an enemy of God. And you say, well, well, how can that be? Because of the character of our God. God, our God is a jealous God. Scripture teaches us this in general, that God is a jealous God from way back in the Old Testament, the book of Exodus, uh, as the law was given, Israel was reminded of this, that God uh, treats very seriously uh, the relationship he has with his people and will brute no rival, will accept no equal in that relationship. And so he demands first place, and rightly so, and he is a jealous God. So then how do we treat uh, the world? How do we manage to avoid our affections being transferred to this world. But, well, the reason, sorry, not the reason, but the uh, resource that is given here by James is God himself. And so rather than our affections drawn to the world and away from God, he says, listen, God gives more grace. The grace of God is greater than the temptations we face, the trials we face. The grace of God is greater than the world in which we live. God resists the proud but he gives grace to the humble. Now that begs a question, and the question is going to be answered, and I'm just going to try and write it down here. Do we live passively for God? Do we let go and let God 
How does this work in verse number six? He gives grace. Grace for what? Enablement for what? Are we just to be passive in this world in which we live and depend upon God in some mystical fashion to somehow keep our affections fixed upon him? Well, the answer to that is absolutely no. In fact, um, the reason I say that is that from verse 7 onwards, there are 10 commands of a very practical nature which we need to implement. And the grace of God allows us to implement these 10 commands. And by implementing these 10 commands, by God's grace, our affections will be fixed completely upon him and diverted from the world environment in which we live. Such a serious issue that we need to take on board that we do not um, act in a way that is spiritually adulterous, that we do not be characterised by infidelity and our affections and love be fixed upon the Lord. Now you might say, what's that got to do with wars and fightings? Well, the answer is simple. And I'll put a wee note up at the top here, which is just this, that we tend to become like the object of our affection. If our love is fixed upon God, we will become godly. If our love is fixed upon Christ, we'll become Christ-like. If our love is fixed upon this world, we'll become worldly. And that will impact our relationships. And that is the second reason why there could be wars and fightings among us. Because we're behaving in a fleshly uh, way. That's the first reason. Second reason here, we're behaving in a worldly fashion. It's a challenge. James chapter 4, verse 4 down to verse number 6. Thank you.